Hey everyone, welcome to our next session, API Management as Code, a declarative approach to handling API artifacts. My name is Richard Stroop and I'll be your moderator today. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce our speakers uh, to the session. We have Hugo Guerrero and Vamsi Ravula and uh, they, they will be uh, going over uh, three scale and how, how we use it. Um, for a few logistics, just before we get started though, uh, if you have any questions during the session, you can submit them in the chat. Um, we'll try to get to them if we have time. If not, we can, we can always follow up with you afterwards. So don't worry. Uh, there'll also be a recording of this session live on YouTube after, after it's done. So you can go check it out again or share it with people you think would be interested. Uh, so make sure to take advantage of that opportunity. Uh, and with that, let me turn things over to Hugo. Thanks, Rich. Uh, perhaps you can uh, help me out sharing the screen. So yeah, um, we're going to cover a very interesting topic uh, today. And it's related to um, API management. And it's related to um, API, uh, APIs in general, as well as the uh, DevOps process, uh, GitOps, and declarative approach for that. So with me, it's Bamsi, as you can see, and it was introduced in the, uh, in, uh, before. And we're going to be covering this uh, topic in the next following minutes. And if uh, we are uh, good enough, we will be uh, seeing a, a video recording for the uh, demo that covers uh, an example of how this can be managed uh, in real life, right? So let's get started. And when we talk about API management, it's when you get so crowded with, you know, cables and ports and such, it's like when you are doing a lot of APIs, right? Perhaps you started with one or two APIs when you uh, start to craft your strategy, but then suddenly you realize that you get a lot of them and you are getting out of control. So that's where you need management of that. When you need cable management, when you look your your API landscape like this, it means that you will need to have um, some uh, some management, and that's what we are thinking. Because most of the times, a lot of people think that APIs is just exposing a REST API, uh, an HTTP endpoint, but there's a lot of things around that that helps you out with monitoring, provisioning, um, contract management, access control, policies, and and so on. Um, and these kind of things that we are surrounding our uh, API or endpoint, our implementation for that, because remember, uh, the I in API, uh, it's uh, it's related to interface and not the implementation. So you have more things around. And when we think about more things, we think like, you know, where is the policies, how you're configuring your policies, how you're configuring your application plans, because your, your users will have a plan that offers you a certain amount of rate limits uh, through an account, through a certain kind of keys, through uh, some applications that need to create and register and being able to sign up for those. So you have services, you have specifications. So you have a ton of things you need to handle and you need to be able to care about and uh, be able to manage. So it, it becomes uh, complicated. It becomes a lot of things to, to think about. And this is just an example. This is a, a diagram shows you how those uh, different objects interact between them, but there's all, a lot of dependencies, a lot of correlations. So um, there are a lot of things to be able to manage there. So it's not just code, it's, it's you as an API owner need to be able to uh, always bring this from one from first your dev ideation to development through different environments. It can be, get complicated and it gets complicated when uh, you suddenly realize that APIs do not offer any single value until they reach production. Yeah, you can have 800 APIs in development or in testing, integration testing and pre-production, but if they're not getting all the way to production in a securely and very well-managed fashion, it's most of the time gonna be just Wild West, no value, uh, no real management there. So this is where the um, deployment and the uh, launching of the implementation as well as the contract becomes uh, super important. So remember this, uh, DevOps also, it's one of the two, the uh, uh, practices and, 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 all, and, and uh, structures and activities that allows us to be able to um, increase the quality and, and the capabilities to deliver um, our API. So we're gonna try to see how the DevOps can intersect with APIs to be able to, uh, to deliver this kind of benefits. 
So one of the things that we are going to be focusing on is the concept of the operator pattern. And by operator pattern, it's this capability of a controller to be able to observe a declared desired state and being analyzed how it is different from the current status, the current state of, uh, of, uh, of a system, of a cluster, of an environment, and then take actions as a controller to be able to, you know, uh, remove that difference, remove the gap, and then uh, move that to the, the actual state, the state to the desired state. So that's um, the concept of the operator pattern. And then this, uh, this uh, type of pattern allows us to be able to um, have this approach to declarative uh, uh, manifestations. And one of the things that we will be using for that, it's Git. So Git is a way to have a place where we can manage in a very mature way uh, our single source of, source of truth, where we have already a lot of, uh, of uh, maturity on how to handle PRs, how to handle a history of the changes, who is going to be blamed when, when there's going to be changes. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel there. We can re just reuse Git for that. And then treat everything as code. So it's not just the implementation that we have as a code in, in Git, but it's also the um, API management uh, objects and the API management artifacts that we want to also try to treat as code. So we are able to get the benefits and leverage all the benefits of Git. And then through the Git workflows, like the PRs, like the promotion, that the, uh, like the uh, approvals, uh, reviewers and such, we can then uh, get all the benefits of this mature process to the release of our API artifacts. So in this case, we have AP, uh, we have Git where we um, update our um, our objects, our desired um, uh, applications, and then the controller or a controller will you know see what's going on and then move our um, system, our cluster, or to the desired state, um, and being able to uh, take some actions. So how does it look when we um, execute this kind of applications? Well, is that we have our implementation repository where we have our um, application being uh, deployed. We have um, uh, continuous integration, and then we are able to generate the binary or uh, that it's going to be deployed as in, into a ray sheet, perhaps secondary image or as a WAR file or as a zip file or a jar file. And then we are also being able to manage the exact same thing with a repository of artifacts um, of our API uh, management artifacts, where we also have a continuous delivery um, model where we know that there's going to be a new implementation, but there's also changes for the contract or even just changes to the contract that do not involve um, uh, changes in the implementation. And we are going to be able to uh, push and, and, and um, update the, uh, the different um, um, objects into our uh, target environment. So this is basically a process with a workflow that allows us to um, deploy APIs, uh, API implementation, as well as the API management artifacts that we want. Now, you will wonder, like, what kind of tools do we have to do that? Because this is very um, high level. Well, there's a ton of different options right now that goes from the traditional approach when we have things like very well-established things like uh, Jenkins, Travis, even GitHub Actions, to more a uh, GitOps approach, more uh, cloud-native, uh, cloud-friendly options like we have Argo CD, we have Flux, we have um, Jenkins, Tecton pipelines to be able to build as well as to uh, deploy uh, on, on a more native way. So this is the kind of landscape where we can see uh, different toolings available to uh, accomplish this kind of uh, of solutions. And uh, how do we see this? Well, um, if we are using a native approach, a clear native native approach, we uh, usually tend to rely on two things. So first, it's operators using uh, have the operator SDK and implementing the operator pattern and being able to deploy to be deployed on a cluster. And those operators uh, rely on uh, Kubernetes custom resources. So we can extend the Kubernetes native uh, primitives to be able to um, uh, to increase the, the amount of resources that can be managed using uh, the Kubernetes API. And one of those are, for example, a product uh, uh, custom resource that uh, custom resource definition that then can define a custom resource with certain information that then operators like the tree scale operator can take in, in account and then being able to um, update our target environments, being able to process that information and such. We can define a lot of information in those resources in the case of three scale, we can define from the um, from the product name, the back 
the backend names, uh, some information about the policies, the application plans, the kind of limits and methods that we want to uh, record in our processing and in our analytics. So there's a, a plenty of information. There are different kind of resources. You can have different approaches. Uh, in the case of Triscale, we are um, defining some uh, basic custom resources where we define some information, uh, but there are different different type of resources. So now uh, it's gonna be time to show you um, how we can do this using uh, solutions like uh, Treescale and the Treescale operator for that. So let me um, share with you uh, my video and being able to um, load this and present uh, how we can do this uh, with um, Treescale and the uh, Treescale operator. So first things first, what you can, uh, what we have done already is we have three different uh, three scale tenants, the development tenant, the testing tenant, and the production tenant, right? So what we'll do is we have uh, created three different Argo CD applications that will use custom resources, which are in the form of YAML files to configure different things in these different clusters. And if you look at one of the you know, Argo CD application, which is used to configure the dev tenant. And let's go to the details. For those of you who are aware of uh, Argo CD, you already know this, but the repo URL is the repo that Argo CD application will track. And we are telling it that, you know, for dev tenant, look at the YAML files uh, or monitor the YAML files in the dev branch for the changes. And this is the folder or the path that you need to look at and uh, you need to apply only the files that go out of sync. So we've done the same for uh, the different environments, basically saying, you know, for production, do the target the production branch, for testing, target the production testing. So what happens is initially, once we've uh, configured the Argo CD applications, as you can see, it says uh, it shows out of sync, which means something new was added to, uh, you know, the, the repository that Argo CD wasn't aware of that is not configured in 3Scale currently. So if you look at 3Scale, let's go back to our tenant again here. You see only the default default APIs here and when you look at the repository there is a there is a file in the dev branch which creates a three scale product and a three scale backend and the name of the product is operator product echo API with uh, a daily rate limit of 30 per day so as soon as I say synchronize from my Argo CD application and hit on synchronize what it'll do is it'll take the updated custom resource and apply it to three scale. And as soon as you do that, I refresh my development tenant. I can actually see the operator product echo API with the relevant, uh, you know, rate limits that are being applied here. Let's go ahead and check if that's, that's, that's done properly. Good. Now let's do the same for our uh, test and let's do the same for our production. Uh, so let's see if that that's reflecting well that's reflecting well yeah everything works well so what that's simple enough right but but this is not what we typically do we don't go and keep adding files to say dev test and production separately we make changes we add changes to the dev and then make changes to the uh, then uh, you know merge the dev to test and then merge the test to the production after uh, you know we we are sure everything works well so let's let's try to make a change for example let's let's talk about a scenario where the business comes to you know the development team or the api team saying you know we want to change the name of the api and at the same time we also want to change the rate limits currently it is 30 we want to change it to say uh, you know 50 per day and and uh, let's see how they do that so first things first, let's go to our development branch, which actually tracks the changes for the development tenant. And uh, you know, if there is any change, it intimates, uh, you know, uh, Argo CD to make those changes. So let's go change the rate limits and the name of the product in our dev branch. I'm going to save it. And then let me commit it, commit. Sorry, have an M. Change rate limits. And let me push it to dev. 
As soon as you do that, Argo CD here, when you go back and refresh here, Argo CD will realize that there are changes being made to the repository that tracks the dev tenant, which is the dev branch. And it says it's out of sync. The current state of three scale and your repository are different. Do you want to synchronize those changes? So as you see here, the product name is the same. The rate limits haven't changed. As soon as I hit synchronize, here when I go back to Argo CD, as soon as I hit synchronize here, right here it is. You should see the product name and the rate limits have both changed here. The product name is changed to modified. The rate limits is uh, changed to 50. Now our next task is let's go back to our, uh, you know, VS code and uh, say, okay, now I'm done developing. I want to merge the changes in my development to my, uh, you know, test environment. Let's, let's do that. Let's check out our test check out test let's go git git merge dev i'm merging the dev environment with the test and say this push origin test i'm pushing the changes to the original repository as soon as you do that again the argo cd application when you refresh it the sorry the test one will go out of sync again it's saying the current state of your three scale test tenant the name of the product and the uh, you know the the rate limits that you've changed are not reflected it's 30 and the name is just api there's no modified here do you want to synchronize it i'm going ahead and uh, synchronizing it and you will see the changes are immediately reflected and last but not the least just for the purpose of completion let's do the same for uh, you know our production environment let's check out our production branch and merge the changes in our from our test environment you know we're done testing now we want to push it to production and there you go and then let's just uh, you know push push the prod to the repository on our github do that it goes out of sync refresh synchronize and as soon as you do that the changes should be reflected in your three scale production tenant uh, the name is modified and the rate limits would have been modified too so all in all what you're doing is you're creating a single source of truth for your api management configurations that both your business and engineering can track and so that different people are not working with say some some people are not working with custom resources some people with ui there is a single source of truth and uh, everybody can come and look at this repositories for what is actually happening uh, in your API management program. And at the same time, because we are using Argo CD, custom resources and GitHub repositories, you can include all this as a part of your you know, pipelines and include it in your GitHub as a part of your GitHub strategy. So that brings us to the end of this uh, demo. Uh, I think we can open up to more questions now. Okay, thank you very much, Bamsi, because uh, that was really um, enlightening. Sure. Now, one of the things that you might be wondering uh, here is um, what are the different, no, the different things that Bamsi covered you know, do, during, the, during the demo? There are some questions that you might have raised because um, you also need to be doing this kind of, uh, of right questions. Um, like, for example, when we are talking about the, uh, the different uh, artifacts are like uh, who is the API owner? Who's gonna be managing, who's gonna be approving those flows? Who's gonna be able to uh, decide uh, who's gonna be um, uh, doing the approval in each one of the Git branches? Who's gonna be um, the owner that's gonna be uh, publishing these kind of changes? Who's gonna be managing those, those Git repositories? Perhaps it's the, gonna be the API owners. If your um, if your um, if your organization has these kind of themes, perhaps are the same devs that are doing the uh, implementation uh, and the application for the um, for the demo. So um, there's also information regarding how many of these API uh, artifacts do we want to manage that, like that. Perhaps uh, every one of, of of those. Then the other thing is, uh, should I be able to uh, modify those uh, artifacts? Uh, when they're in production, like, because we do have access to the to the uh, AP, uh, to the UI, so most of the times you will try to avoid that. You don't have the UI available uh, in production. You will have all the changes being done in development, perhaps export the custom resources, and then move them uh, towards the, uh, the, uh, the the end. So there are 
the different kind of things that uh, that we need to ask ourselves when uh, implementing these kind of strategies. So as a, as a, as a summary, um, you can uh, handle your APIs in a declarative way. They will um, help you out to manage um, the components of your API that are not just the implementation. Those artifacts that are part of your API management strategy. Um, certainly will help you with the definitions, will help you see in a single, in a single place, all the uh, different um, configurations and aspects of your uh, of your API management artifacts. So helps you with definitions, helps you to um, do collaboration and be able to share um, those artifacts with the uh, rest of the teams and the owners that need to approve this uh, with each one of the promotions. And the most one of the most important things is that this enables automation. So instead of going to each one of the environments and having the person, you know, doing all the different uh, updates directly on the UI or having to code and, and uh, add some uh, capabilities like automation, manual automation, as well playbooks just to do all those changes. You can rely on things like the embedded automation from uh, things like OpenShift GitOps or Argo CD to be able to, um, to uh, handle this. And it's very well crafted for your type of work. If you are an organization that is relying heavily on design first or API first approach, or if you're still doing code first approach, uh, it doesn't matter. At the end, you will get an API contract, an API um, uh, API plan, API management artifacts that you will need to be able to manage, deploy, and move uh, uh, across different environments. So this is the kind of things that uh, you will be able to uh, implement with these kind of strategies. If you're already using Triscal or uh, Triscal users, you can get this out of the box available. It's uh, going to be playing well with your uh, OpenShift GitOps and uh, OpenShift Techno, Techno application, so you can deploy your API, uh, API implementation, your API management artifacts um, all across the different environments. So that's uh, um, uh, almost everything for now. We just want to invite you again to use the developer sandbox available from the developer site that can help you out to get started. With uh, OpenShift, we started with a lot of the uh, um, application uh, uh, capabilities that we have in the uh, Red Hat portfolio. So this is a very good way to start, to try and um, get us started with uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift. So um, thank you very much. Uh, if there's any questions or comments, uh, Richard, perhaps you can help us with that. If not, um, then we'll obviously enjoy the, the rest of the event. Yeah, th uh, th thanks again, Hugo and, and Pomsi for the video. Um, there are no comments in the chat currently. I'll, I'll give everybody 30 seconds to type something um, while, while we go over uh, just a few things. But uh, again, if you have any questions later, you can, you can always follow up or add comments to the video when it's posted on YouTube, and we'll be, we'll be following up there as well. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see any other comments. So uh, thank you again, Hugo and Vamsi. Uh, thank you all for joining us today for this session.